You're tuned in to Porch Talk with Rev Pat, where raw, real talk rules. So sit back and relax with that delicious cup of coffee or tea or your favorite glass of wine as Rev Pat delivers real, transparent, and raw conversations about all things life. Let's get started. Welcome, 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 welcome to Porch Talk with Rev Pat. I am your host, Rev Pat, and I have a special, special episode this Friday. Today, I am going to be talking to Junior, because I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> He's the CEO of Zippy Stream, one of my favorite, favorite programs out there. And I, I, we're just going to talk about what it's like to be a black, a black man in business. This is a continuation of our series, All Men Ain't Bad. I meant to say that, all men ain't bad. So grab your coffee, grab your tea, get your wine, and let's get talking. Okay. Hey, Junior, you're now one of my favorite people. How are you? How are you? You know, I told you I'm not, we're not scripted, so I, you get to just roll with it. We're going to roll with it together. But thank you. I do want to read your bio. Because you are so young, <laughs> I'm like you are so young, and y'all, he has put up with me because I, this man, this man, oh, has no. many support emails from me. I'm like, you're not answering me. I thought that that that, that and never want. And finally, when we connected, it was revealed that it was all me. It was user error because <laughs> it's in London and I am in Texas. And I was just really thrown off. And he put up with me. He really put up with me. So Junior is an author, a tech entrepreneur, and inspirational speaker. His business portfolio ranges from local sports academies to global media platforms. His achievements have seen him collect numerous business awards and become one of the UK's most sought after motivational speakers. I can believe that. At age 21, he became the best-selling author of the book, How to Be a Student Entrepreneur. Wow. For over a decade, he has worked on government initiatives and helped educational institutions to design their entrepreneurial curriculum. His dynamic, inspirational messages have helped pioneer the current student entrepreneur buzz across the UK and Europe. He hosts the podcast show, Revelations of an Entrepreneur, and has also produced one of the highest ranked business courses. Really? On you, <laughs> Emmy? Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, I need to start my subscription up again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> he has a remarkable way of engaging with audiences, and the central theme of his message is around building a spirit of excellence. His training sem seminars have impacted more than 100,000 aspiring entrepreneurs to set big goals, become more resilient, and maximize their full potential. Welcome, Junior. Wow. I am so honored. Thank you for you having know, me. This is an absolute pleasure to be on the show. You know, um, I don't believe in coincidences ever mm. um, because of what I believe. I believe that um, anyone that God really truly connects me with is a divine connection. <laughs> and uh, when, I, when that door is open, I walk through it. I don't, I don't have time to wait. I walk. I, I really, really, you know how I did it. I ran through it. I was like, I need to do it. <laughs> There's no, op no options. <laughs> there was no option. I, it was called the ass tail. I'm asking you, but I'm telling you. Yeah. Interview you. Um, and that's, the, that's just, the, I feel like um, we have so few opportunities or chances mm. to take advantage of the doors that God opens for us. Yeah. And yeah. at this point, in my latter years, I don't want to miss those chances because I probably have missed so many prior to now that I don't want to miss anymore. And when we first spoke, when we first, when you put up with me trying to explain how to work something that was really very simple, I was embarrassed because I'm a techie. And I'm like, well, I'll be down here. <laughs> you were so patient, but there was something about your spirit that just touch me and oh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't say that lightly so I am really truly honored to have you with me and before we get to, into what it's like for you to be an entrepreneur and be an African-American man 
And I never even thought about in the UK, you know, because I, my, my mind was on the challenges here mm. in the United States. So I never even, it, when, I, when I thought about this is where I want him to go in his conversation with me, I didn't even click to the UK. I was so focused on here. But to know that, um, and I'm sure you had some challenges, but to know mm. that you, you go back and you get these younger people and you encourage them to do better and to be better, that deserves a whole lot of praise, I'm telling you. So thank you. Thank you so um, much. Take the conversation where you want. If I need to jump yeah. in, I'll jump in. But just let the people know. And ladies, he's handsome. And he's <laughs> let me get that out of him. I am. Mean, <laughs> he's taken. taken. He's taken. <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh, well, thank you so much for having me. And honestly, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure. It's um uh again i i i really 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 appreciate um the platform that you create and that's why we started the, the zippy stream platform to actually help um podcasters like you with a message and you're creating platforms for other people so um yeah when i was asked and told I, there's no way i could say no so it's uh, of course uh, but no, thank you so much it's um every time i hear some of the stuff that i've done in the past it it really does um help me to reflect because sometimes as uh, my mentality is every single day is a new day so i don't really get sort of hung up on what's been done in the past it's like yeah great we might have spoken to a hundred thousand young people in the past but there's another hundred thousand that's here tomorrow we need to keep reaching more keep reaching more so i think that's the that's the drive that keeps me going in business and in life it's knowing that i don't spend too much time looking back and patting myself on the back um, and I don't spend too much time looking forward and seeing the big, the magnitude of the task up ahead. Um, I just trust in God that we're heading in this direction. Whatever comes, will come. Whoever arrives will arrive. Whoever's here to hear it, we're just going to keep sowing those seeds every single day, every single day, every single day. Um, and I think because of that, I don't get burned out and I don't get, have like anxiety about, oh, no, oh my goodness, maybe I'm not good enough for this. Um, opportunity that's up ahead it's i can only deal with the opportunities that i'm i've been graced for right here and right now so that's probably one of the, the best advice that i'll give to people is just keep your head down running you know just keep your head down and keep running because um so if you look at the past it's either it's gonna make you feel inferior like you know i've made so many mistakes in the past or it's gonna make you get ahead of yourself thinking i'm so great look what i've done and sometimes that could be the biggest enemy of what you're about to do next is that you got too complacent. So you're, you know, God's got bigger things planned for you, um, but you, you're, you're already celebrating, thinking that you've made it. And it's like, no, just keep climbing. There's another, there's another level that I want to show you. Now, let me jump in. Don't, uh, because my, the, on the devotional this morning, um, that, is, that was all, that was the, the, the verse was Philippians 3 and 13. Mm. Getting the things that are behind me and pressing mm -hmm. For the yes. high calling, and you just did a whole synopsis of it. Why <laughs> we don't look behind us? And I was the same way. I spoke last night. Uh, I spoke on uh, someone else's platform, and when she was reading, she read the bio, and I went, "Oh my god, yeah, that, that's a good person. Who's that? I want to meet that I person." Like I'm old. No, I felt old because I mean, she kept giving out these numbers. Wow. But I don't get burned out. Mm. I love doing what I'm doing. So when you said you don't get burned out, what motivates you the most? Do you know, I think it's knowing that it's possible. I think that's definitely what motivates me the most, knowing that what it's, I have full faith and belief in what I'm working on, that it's working, that I know it's possible. It's kind of like, how fast would you drive a car if you knew that you could never crash? You know, you're going to go as fast as you can, right? Um, you're, not, you're, not, you're never going to limit yourself. You're never going to pull back. You're never going to go half-hearted at something um, when you know that it's possible. If I believe that we can get that investment, I'm going to go wholeheartedly towards it. If I believe that, you know, you can sign that contract, we can write that book, we can set up that seminar, we can launch that project, I'm going to go wholeheartedly into it because I genuinely, if I don't believe it, why am I bothering? So it's, uh, I think knowing that it's possible, I think that's the thing that excites me most. It's like, why do we settle for anything less when we know that that's what we want and that's possible? 
Um, and and that, that's what really pushes me. And, and I think a lot of times we get, especially as black people, we do get this narrative in our minds that maybe it's from past experience, maybe from generations past, maybe from social media, or maybe from um, uh, our adversaries or anything that's up against us. There's all these different narratives to say you can do this or you can't do that or black people shouldn't be in these rooms or black people can't do this or you're too young or you're too old and all of this. And I'm like, right, some of this might be true, some of this might not be true, but my first, my, my first duty is to test and challenge this narrative. If I'm gonna believe a narrative about who I am, I need to put this to the test. Um, and that's what I do. So it's like, I wrote my first book in three weeks. The only reason I wrote the book in three weeks is because I didn't know how long it took to write a book. <laughs> so I, put, <laughs> I didn't know how long. Afterwards, somebody told me that it takes on average nine months to two years to write a book. I didn't know. I just challenged myself and pushed myself to the limit. Had I known it took nine months to write a book, I would have happily taken nine months because that's what I would have succumbed to. That's the norm. But because I didn't have any concept of that in my mind, I said, I'm going to push myself to write as much as I can. And I completed the whole book in, in a three week spell and um, sent it over to a publisher. And I didn't know that, again, I didn't know how many revisions it usually takes, but they said, you know, you pretty much nailed it first draft. There's just one or few little typos that we're going to put, but we're not going to charge you anything for that because the book is perfect almost as it is. And, um, and it's only after, I thought that was normal. It was only after speaking to other publishers, they said, no, it took me about six drafts before the publisher accepted it. It took me seven drafts, it took me four drafts. And, and I think that sometimes it's the beauty of being a bit naive sometimes, or I say walking in faith. Um, I'm not ever relying on my own cap capacity or my own ability. It's, that, it's the God in me. It's, it's, if this is what God's called me to do, I'm going to do it and I'm going to trust. And I know it's possible because God cannot lie. It's not even that God doesn't lie, he cannot lie. Now, isn't it the most secure feeling? And nobody else has to understand it. Mm, yeah. And and you don't have, and, and I am learning to not expect anyone to understand mm. it. Just knowing that this is what he said do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm laughing in my head because I'm thinking about the things that I have on my to-do list. And the <laughs> And the people that I am going to send an invitation to, and mm. it, it is, and they probably will go, "What the heck? Who is this?" Yes. But <laughs> in my mind, because I know the God I serve, mm -hmm. I only have two options: they either going to say yes, or they're going to say no. Yeah. And if they say no, it's no skin off of my back. Exactly. What makes me feel good. Is that you know what I was crazy enough to try it? Mm, Period. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think ended the year with the book "Crazy, uh, Crazy Faith." And there is one line that I that I have planted in my spirit: "It's only crazy till it happens." Mm, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think it's it's to most people it is it is irrational. It's unbelievable. It's hard to fathom. Um, but I think, like you said, once you know the God that you serve, it's the God of the Bible he has a special characteristic, he has a special way of using the smallest things to do big things, just so he gets the glory. Um, thinking of the story of Gideon, and he had 10,000. He said, no, 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 no. I want to get the glory. Take all your men away. Take, him, take even more away. Just 300. Now people are going to say it's unbelievable and you're going to get it. That's it. That's it. And, and God does that so that we don't say, look, look, what, look how amazing we are. He does that so we can say, look how amazing he is because there's no way that little old me should be able to do all of this. There's mm -hmm. no way that little old me should be able to achieve these things. Um, so, it's, so, so God, once you understand the nature of God and he's telling you to do something that seems very irrational, you say, all right, you're, you're building up for another testimony. I get this. I get this. And I'm just going to put my faith in this and I'm going to walk in this. And, and I think the reason I can keep putting my faith in it is because I've got a track record of what God has done in the past. I've seen this happen many times over. Um, it was actually quite funny. There was one, one business that I, I was running about six years ago now. And every single month, we made, we made a lot of money in a month. And for some reason, the money was just disappearing. Every single month, we were almost like one or two days away from bankruptcy. So this happened the first month. And then just in time, in the nick of time, something will happen, we'll get sales or we'll get some investment or something will happen and all the money will come back. And I was like, oh, that, that was a close shave. 
<laughs> and then the next month, the exact same thing happens again. And we're praying and we're praying and then bang, the exact amount of money that we needed that month happens again. And, and month three, that happens. Month four, it happens. By the time we get to month six, the staff are panicking. They're like, Junior, it's, it's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Are we going to have jobs? I'm like, God's got it. Don't worry. I've seen this happen six times already. God's, God's got it. And, and just in the nick of time, the exact money that we needed arrived. And, and I, I asked God, I was like, why? Why are we doing it like this? Why are we making it difficult? <laughs> it's, um, and he says, I, I want you to know that this whole journey you're going on is going to be dependent on me. You're, work, you're walking with me. You're not walking ahead of me or you're not running, but you're walking along with me. So it's not your own strength that's getting you through all this. I want you to know that it's me that's doing this every single time. And, and that's now how I live my life. So I, no matter how crazy something seems, I've got the unwavering faith now because I've got the evidence to back it. And, and like you said, not many people will understand it because not many people would, would have built that relationship where God told them to do something and you know, they've, they've been able to see it happen for themselves. Well, you know what I found? I found out even the closest people to me don't understand it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, stepping out on faith is probably one of the loneliest mm. uh, actions that you can take in this journey. It is. It, it, it is. Purity, this is what, because purity, is, it, it goes like this. This is what God gave me, and this is what I'm going to do. Mm. And I'm stepping out on faith and I don't have anything to show evidence. <laughs> this is what he said do. But I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. I'm going to do yeah. it with an empty bank account. I'm going to do it with just what I have. I'm following his instruction. Just use what you've got. I'm not trying to do anything other than that. And I'm just going to watch him work this out. Yeah. And that's just hard. For, and it, the, the, I don't think it's just it's hard for them to understand. It's hard for us to explain. You can't explain. It is, it, it is no yeah. Words. There are no words for it. Um, and all you can say is, well, only thing I can tell you, brother, you don't have to just watch and see what he does. But it, that's exactly it. I, it I, I think one of the best advice I was given around you know, even trying to explain it is, um, even for myself, is don't let what you don't understand rob you of what you've experienced. Whoa. Yeah. So I might not understand how this is going to happen. I'm not, I might not understand when, or I might not understand why this is happening, but just because I don't understand, I'm not going to let that rob me of what I know that experience in the past. I know the amount of times that God has come through after prayer. I know like after a prayer, we get a call instantly and something happens. And it's like, this was exactly what we needed. I know where, you know, we heard a word and we prayed on, on a scripture and then, all of a sudden, a door opened. Now, at the time, I didn't understand it, but because I've got those past experiences, that, that gives me enough credit to trust God on this new thing that I don't even understand how he's working. But then in hindsight, it will all make sense and it will come together. So, yes, don't, don't let what you don't understand yet rob you of the experiences that you've already had. So what are, what would you say? Because uh, I know you've probably had a lot of challenges. As, mm. a, as an African American businessman, black businessman, what is one of the biggest challenges you would say that you've had to overcome? Because Zippy Stream is amazing, and I will mm. from the perspective of Zippy Stream. Zippy Stream. So, how did that even come about? <laughs> uh, what the heck, Zippy Stream? <laughs> you know, I told you to change the name. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know it come about? I'm telling you, when we did that first, when we did our, when I first met you and you came up on the screen, I was like, well, I'm be dang, wait a minute now. I was looking for Bobby and that's not who I was talking about. <laughs> What's going on? So how did that come about? So I've, I've been working in business for, for a long time um, and probably the last seven years, more tech businesses. Um, and normally I'm called into as a consultant for all the other businesses. So I built up a good, strong network and, and I was just thinking to myself, I know a lot of this stuff and I'm connecting other entrepreneurs to investors. Let me take the leap and actually do this for myself. And when I was looking around an idea, um, I love podcasting. I love listening to podcasts and I launched my own podcast for several years back. But one of the most frustrating things about being a podcaster was that it was a one-way broadcast. I didn't know who my audience was. 
and and I, I thought that was a bit unfair. And speaking to every, every other podcaster, they're like, yeah, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, Apple never tell you who your audience is. Spotify never tell you who the audience is. I'm thinking, no, that's the way it was. We're going to change the game. And just set out to do lots of research, researching on the idea, speaking to almost 200 different podcasters, getting their feedback. And it was just built off the feedback of other podcasters. People would say, hey, we like this feature. We want this feature. We wish it could do this. We wish it could do that. And eventually we built this all-in-one marketing platform that helps podcasters grow their audience. Um, and it's been so well received because I think at the heart of it, it wasn't about me going into my head and creating it. It was more about me exploring the situation. Although I also had the problem, I had to explore the situation with other podcasters and decide, right, this is what the audience wants. So this is what the audience is going to get. And I think that's the culture that we try to create every single day when we're working on the product it's right what do the audience want most and let's serve them at that point well i i well i know that this is gonna blow up that's why i told you before we started i didn't i don't even want to tell anybody about it period <laughs> but <laughs> that would not be right so now they get to find out about it because mm, I, that was this what this kept secret ever <laughs> yeah so do you know how that sounds you saw Man, but it kind and that that's kind of spiritual in nature. Although you're applying it to business, mm -hmm. we should see a problem. And although folk tell us that's just the way that goes, mm. we should consult him and say, okay, but how can we? How can I fix this? Yeah, I know that's yeah. what you're saying. That's how it goes. And that even goes across the board to those young people that you speak to because they have probably heard that answer to some problems that they face. Well, that's just the way it is. I mean, yeah. we've all heard that. Well, that's yeah, just, it's, that's it's, the way it is. Doesn't make it right. Do you know what? I mean, speaking about experiences as a as a as a young black man, um, I remember when long before I even had dreams of being an entrepreneur, I studied economics in college, um, and I remember when there's loads of people applying for for jobs um, to get like in the big banking sectors and things like that. And I never had really had a strong interest in, in that route anyway. I was still sort of finding my feet, but um, that's just like the be all and end all. And, and there was one, it was actually an Asian brother who was, who was saying that, yeah, you know what? Everyone's going to be applying, but no, nah, good luck to you basically because you're black. And, and I was kind of like thrown as like, why does that mean that we're going to be no, at the at the back of the queues, that's like in his mind, it was like right, the white the white kids are going to get the place first, then the Asian kids, and then you know because of racism, the black kids are going to struggle the most. And 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 in my mind, it was like, well, if I can't climb the corporate ladder, I'm going to build my own ladder and climb that myself. Whoa! And that threw me into entrepreneurship. So I think it's learning how you can have that mentality that just because something is the way it is doesn't mean that you have to live like that how can we disrupt it how can we change it and if i can't change it then i'm going to change how i think about it at least so that i'm not affected and that's always been how i dealt with every single adversity it's either i'm going to change the situation and if i can't change the situation if i'm not in a position of power to change the situation the best i can do then is change how i think about the situation so that at least i'm i'm not affected I think most problem with the, the, the problem with most people, they realize that they can't change a particular situation, but then they don't change how they perceive or see the situation. And now they're stuck in a prison, a mental prison, where, you know, I can't get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all I see is these prison bars. So that limits them from either dreaming or aspiring or doing anything. And, and that's the life of the many young, many young people that I speak to. And that's why when, it, when I come in, first and foremost, I'm an example that you can get out of the prison bars. The prison bars mm. are not as thick as you think they are. They are there, but there's something within each and every single one of you that can bend these bars and you can walk out if you are ready to. Um, and, and, and for those who, I mean, everyone, everyone gets dealt a different card. Um, you know, there's, I, I'm, I've considered myself to be one of the most privileged um, young black men in, in, in the UK, not because I was born in wealth, but because I had two loving parents and um, two loving parents to get that help build my faith. Most people don't have that. For me, that was enough. Um, so that 
you know, for, for different people in different situations, it's right. How can we change your perspective? Although you are in this situation, how can you play these cards that you've been dealt to the best of your ability, at least? Um, sometimes we see other people on social media and thinking, look, their life is so great. Their life is amazing. My life can never be like that. So let me just give up. It's like, no, you've still got something. You might not have what they have. You might not be in the same starting position, but with the cards that you have been dealt, how can you play that to the best of your ability? So at least the next generation that comes after you, now they have a, a better starting point than when you had. So if that's the best you can do, let's at least do that uh, and, and let the rest, you know, let the rest be. But look, and we have to remind them, dear heart, what you see on Facebook and Instagram, that's not real. That's mm, just what yeah. they want you to see. That's of course. a version of their lives that they want you to see. Yeah. But unless you're at their house and, or on that boat or, or, <laughs> or in Dubai with them, that's just mm. a version of life that, and I think that's, that's important to instill, especially in this the younger, this, this, these younger people who live on TikTok and Instagram and yeah. Facebook Reels, that they understand that you're seeing a version of life that is really probably has nothing to do with the way these people are living. And um, so that's that's so commendable because I I am really, I I, I am the <laughs> Making sure that, that th this next generation and the generation after is taken care of is mm. art's passion of mine. And I, and you know, they've I got it really hard. They've got it really hard. Um, I, it's, it, it used to be a time when if you had, uh, if you had bullying going on at school, I know after, the, after school's finished, the bullying stops. But now it follows them. Um, and you know, it follows them on their social media and devices that they have. So it follows them to bed, it follows them to the bathroom, to the toilet, in the restaurant. It, they're always there seeing the notifications. And, uh, and, and I think a lot of people have to understand that this younger generation, they've got it a lot worse than any yeah. generation in the past, a lot worse because yeah. and the, the level of distractions. Like, yeah, yeah. The level of distractions are quite, it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, Mindless. You have the video games that my grandson will sit and play for hours. You have mm -hmm. the TikTok that my 17-year-old granddaughter would just like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for hours. Yeah. Not to, not to even, you, we can't even touch what we don't know. That mm. we're consuming yeah. or seeing or whatever. And if we don't do something, who's going to do it? I mean, exactly. like, it's just that that's so clear to me. If we don't do it, and I'm not just talking about through the podcast or through this or look, I'm going to be frank on this. There are no excuses. Mm. I'm not wealthy. I'm not rich. I'm using what I have. Mm. And if what I have is my dining room table, a couple of lights and a ring light and a camera to, to have people come on and share their knowledge or, or share their resources with people that otherwise would not have it or receive it, then I'm sorry, that's 30 minutes or 30 to 40 minutes that's well worth it to me. Yeah, yeah. Now, does it disrupt my life? Yeah, because that means everybody has to clear out of the downstairs. Everybody <laughs> has to find somewhere else to go. Some days it means I have to go and close myself in the closet and record a podcast. Mm. But is it worth it? Of if course. one person is helped by what Jay says or what any other guest says, if they are able to see themselves in one of in one of my guests, if just one, then we've done. Mm. Yeah, and we've done. And we've left, it. we've left the best legacy we could ever leave. I'm, it's That's not it. about money. It's about no. somebody that when you turn ninety years old, going, "Hey, Mr. Jay, you remember me?" That's it. That's it. It's. Do you know what? It's one of the scariest things as well. Um, when, for anyone who is talented or pursuing goals and things, one of the scariest things is that you can, you can become successful, but still not fulfill your purpose. So, you know, success is obtaining something you desire. So if you desire that car, that business, that job, that position, you, you become successful. I've got it. I've tick, 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 tick all my New Year's resolutions, but you didn't fulfill your purpose. Um, and, and that really hit me because every year I have this 
personal goal, I need to buy a new uh, investment property. So I've been starting it for, for four or five years now consecutively, and I've been keeping up every year. I'll buy a new investment property. And, and it hit me, it's like, you can, you can buy properties for the next 10 years. And you know, if you haven't evangelized to anybody, if you haven't helped somebody, if you haven't passed on any knowledge to someone, you, you haven't fulfilled your purpose. You've just built all these bricks and mortar and, and what are you going to do with it after that? <laughs> it's, it's, there is no legacy there. It's, uh, that's not where the legacy lies. Yeah. Day, it's still going to be a building. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's still going to be a building. Now, exactly. I know you've got to go. It's two thirteen. I agree. Two fifteen. So before we before we close out, because I, you know, I have to have you back until asking you again. Absolutely. We got to do a part two. Because mm -hmm. I really would love it if you would just give just a a a few tips for those who want to be entrepreneurs not those that are already doing yeah for those who want to be entrepreneurs Amazing. so <clears throat> and i can put that on my bonus content yeah absolutely I so put it on a zippy <laughs> yeah. on a zippy stream well, bonus content <clears throat> so um, bonus content y'all i'm telling you it's exclusive content only those it. that are members to your podcast have subscribed to the podcast and get it. Exactly. So before we close, I want to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. um, how has your be your being such a successful business businessman affected your marriage? And number two, what is the one thing that you, other than faith, other than God, that you would say to someone who wants to step out on faith and do their own thing? What is one piece mm -hmm. of advice? So first, how has being a successful entrepreneur and a success a successful motivational speaker, how has that impacted your marriage and your life? And uh, beyond so, so for the first question, how has it impacted my marriage and my life? I'm so fortunate and so blessed to have a partner that is very understanding. Um, she understands that when she's in bed at 10 or 11, I'm still working till 2 a.m. Um, she understands that I'm on the road because I've got to talk at this school and that school and that school and I've got to help these people and I might not be back for three or four days. Um, she understands that I don't have the time to sometimes cook or clean for myself. So she's an amazing uh, helpmate in that it's not necessarily like you no know, gender roles or anything like that. It's he's a very busy person and I need to help him so he can be more productive for the greater good. So fortunately, it's, um, I, I think I definitely married right in, the, in that, that complements everything I do. And I would never, ever be able to do what I'm doing right now if not for my wife. Um, there'll be times where, look, darling, I need to remortgage this house because I'm going to invest in this new project, this new business, and she, where she's on the same wavelength. Uh, for many people, that could be a big, topic of contention um i might be said darling i need you to cover the bills for the next three four months because all the money that i've got right now is going to be going into this project until it starts to materialize and she takes over the 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 breadwinner role um and she does it effortlessly as well without any complaints and grace so um i've been that's probably been one of my biggest blessings um i don't know how i would have been able to achieve half of what i've achieved if not for having someone who's so understanding. Um, so that's definitely um, one of the tips that I'll give people. Marry right. <laughs> marry right, y'all. Um, marry right. It's important. Marry right. Mm. Um, and, and the other piece of advice I'll give to people is, um, if, you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, start to hang around other people who are entrepreneurs. You know, you don't want to be sharing your dreams of going to the moon with your friends who are afraid of heights. So, oh. so you, you need to be around people who, when you tell them your goals and your dreams, they're not going to laugh at you or they're not going to pull it down. They're going to be like, come on, you can do better than that. Is that it? Come on, you can, you, you're, you're greater than that. You can, even, you can go further than that. You want to be, definitely be around people who are going to push you um, because overall, you, you, you are, if you don't see it, you can't become it. So put yourself in circles where you can see it. It's, it's normal to you. Uh, put yourself in circles where... Um, it's not strange for black people to do certain things. And there are circles like that. 
You know, there are people who've opened doors for, for us, white people who've opened doors for us. Some black people have stepped in, some black people haven't stepped in. And now there's black people within those spaces that can say, look, I'm an example. It's, it's okay on this side. Let me show you how it works. But I think sometimes we, we still listen to, oh no, I can't go there because that's the white man's space. I'm like, look, there's, there's black people at the top of every single, uh, whether it's the music industry, whether it's the fashion, whether it's politics, mm -hmm. there's a sector there. They might not be the most visible, but they are there. Um, and that kind of removes every single excuse that we've ever had. It's like this new generation, the best thing that you can do for the old generation that struggled was to actually walk in the pathway that they've they've worked hard to create for you uh, a lot of people had to suffer and sacrifice and face the the brunt of the hardship to create this pathway the best thing you can do for their legacy is to actually walk that pathway and build it further and keep extending it and keep pushing those barriers so definitely be around people surround yourself with people who um are going in a direction that you're going and, and we have to be aggressive with that sometimes that these are my circle and this is my, this is the circle I'm, I have to force myself into because this is who I want to become. Well, I need you to repeat, don't share your dreams because I, I think I missed something. This <laughs> so don't, don't share your dreams of going to the moon with your friends who are afraid of wow. heights. Wow. You know, I'm still in there, right? <laughs> yeah, please do. I'll give, I'll give you credit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you credit. I won't do you like that. So it is 2.19, we're four minutes over, I apologize, but thank Absolutely. you, thank I've you, enjoyed thank this. you for your time. And you know I'm gonna sit, no, no, you send me, <laughs> I'm gonna send you the link. And send me the link, we'll put part two. And we're gonna two. do part two, and it's gonna be, go on Zippy Stream, where my bonus content is exclusively for those who have subscribed to Porch Talk, and it is Beyond the Porch. That is the name of the exclusive content that is only available on Zippy Stream. And if you are listening to this or watching this on YouTube, it is in my link, and you need to get on that link. You want to hear the rest of this conversation? You're going to have to be a, a subscriber. So you want to be a subscriber. I want to thank Junior for taking this time out. I want to thank you for joining me here on the porch and as usual we'll be right back here next friday and as always everyone is welcome and has a seat on the porch y'all have a blessed one